Live from the JSA Podcast Studio, presenting Data Movers, showcasing the leaders behind the headlines in the telecom and data center infrastructure industry. Hey, everybody. Welcome to our new podcast series, Data Movers. I'm your host, Jamie Scott Okataya, CEO and founder of JSA, along with my fabulous co-host, top B2B social media influencer, Mr. Evan Christel. Hey, Jamie. Uh, welcome, everyone, to Data Movers, where we sit down with the leading voices in today's telecom and data center world, supporting the requirements of this new normal. Uh, so, Jamie, did you see the Mars Perseverance landing by any chance? I saw a brief clipping on, on the news, and it was cool as heck, I will say. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty cool. Um, amazing to think that the world we're in, communications technology is behind now getting that video in, in 4K from Mars to our TV sets. I mean, yeah. beyond the technical accomplishment of landing, the communication side is really fascinating. It's so fascinating. The, the newscaster said, okay, here's your first sound from Mars. Everyone listen in. And then you could hear this like, I don't know, it sounded windy. I'm not sure if that's a thing in Mars, but this crazy noise. And I'm like, we're listening in on Mars. Like that, I mean, from a telecom perspective, that's pretty intense, right? It's pretty intense. And the technology behind it is fascinating. One of the pioneers of the internet, uh, Vince Cerf, mm -hmm. who's actually been working for over a decade on an interplanetary internet. So the idea is you'll have lots of devices and rovers and, uh, you need a brand new network, a brand new set of protocols to support all of these uh, missions that are traveling around the solar system. So I don't know, does our next guest have uh, interplanetary uh, network support by any chance? Uh, you know, that's the one though. thing I can't help you with. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing this company, just give them a couple of, of okay. Uh, years or months even. A couple of decades, <laughs> years, months, okay. Well, let me formally introduce here. Um, our, our guest, super excited to have uh, today, Mike Olson, Senior Vice President at Consolidated Communications. Mike, welcome to JSA TV, Data Movers. Glad to be here. Yeah, and Mike, before we dive into the interview, I, I noticed from your bio, you're, you're from Minnesota. You went to school in Minneapolis. Um, you, you've worked professionally, uh, you know, your, your career in the uh, Minnesota, Minneapolis area. My, my question is really, why are you guys so nice? What, what is it about <laughs> Minneapolis in particular? Everyone is nice. It is in the water or the air or what, what's going on up there? And just to preface this, if for those of you listening in on a podcast and, and you can't see our fabulous Evan, he has a shirt that say it's way too peopley outside on right now. <laughs> so this is where the question's coming from, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I actually grew up in Iowa and actually moved to Minnesota to go to college. So that's probably oh, so from we're... nice to nicer. It's right. really yeah, it for sure. <laughs> you know, I, I think the big thing is people just embrace the outdoors and embrace being busy, embrace being out in public and, and just doing everything with the all four seasons up here. And, and I think it just makes a happier person overall. And uh, cause it is true. And I travel the country uh, quite frequently, which I haven't the last year, but uh, this Midwest or Minnesota nice is a real thing. It really is. Um, and, uh, you know, I think there's such a community spirit, which we'll, we'll get to in a, in a heartbeat, actually, um, part of your consolidated DNA. Um, but, it, you know, you, you also mentioned, you know, past year, it's been um, crazy. Uh, we're actually nearing the one year anniversary mark. I don't know if anyone's going to celebrate, but uh, for when COVID-19 first hit the U.S. And, uh, you know, it's, it's been very tumultuous, needless to say. How has Consolidated been helping with the intense demand for broadband and business communications? And, and how have you seen changes in your customer behavior during this crazy pandemic? Yeah, good question. And you know, when I think about it, it's, it's, it's almost hard to believe it's been a year because at times it's went slow and times when you reflect back, it, it, it's been almost a year. And I'll never forget that week I was actually in Houston. And when I flew out, things seemed normal when I flew back there was 30 people on my flight that Friday, but 
Yeah, I think at, at that point, that following week, um, not that it was chaos, but we everybody needed to move fast, including consolidated, deploying people home, and and we did it very well as long as, along with a lot of uh, businesses. But really, what we needed to showcase was being very flexible. People needed bandwidth upgrades like that. And uh, I remember those first six, eight weeks, we did hundreds and hundreds of expedites. We call them in our industry where we had to turn up bandwidth and connectivity within 48 hours just to support all those businesses that were uh, deploying people at home. And I think the other thing what really spawned this is, <clears throat> you know, we've been talking about cloud for five, six plus years. And, and you know, at times cloud has been hard to adopt uh, for a business because right now they kind of control everything and it's hard to let control go. And, and when you're talking about cloud, you're entrusting some of your services that you control today with a provider like us. But this really forced that adoption of cloud. For example, you know, taking your phone from your desk and running home and plugging it in and continuing doing business just like you were sitting in the office. So it really, really accelerated um, the adoption of cloud, the importance of cloud, the importance of being diverse. And because you know, the, the hybrid model that, that we're in, I think we'll continue to be in. You know, it'll be somewhere in the middle you know, a lot of companies are talking about some permanent um, work from home employees. Is that going to be 20%, 30%? I, I don't know. I think it'll be something in the middle. And I think this hybrid of, and, and, and me personally, I, I was not a work from home person. And um, I like going to the brick and mortar. I'm all about seeing people, culture, that type of thing. But I've learned that when things go back to whatever the new norm is, it, it, it'll be more productive for me to sometimes work from home, especially a, a long travel week. And if I get back on a Thursday night, it may be wise to work at home. So I think it's really opened up businesses' minds on we need to do it differently. We need to be very, very flexible because if we are, we can be much more productive. And I think the other thing too, which you probably saw some press is um, the emphasis in residential. We're now, our homes have become a workplace. And I know for me sitting out my window faced the street, I saw our vans go by for months. I saw our competitors' vans go by for months. That was something we hadn't seen in our industry for a long, long time because um, there wasn't, it was more of a entertainment value from being at home versus a true work from home environment. So that's really the biggest changes. And I think what we're seeing now as we're moving closer to the old norm, slowly but surely, is a lot of companies um, that were maybe holding back projects, wanna do them and they wanna do them now. So we as service providers in our industry, we need to become faster than we were before because, because that's what businesses are demanding. They're demanding services much quicker, much more flexible, uh, so that's really initiative, not only a consolidated, but I guess my peers in the industry. That's phenomenal. And speaking of faster, I see you've upgraded over 1.6 million additional fiber gig services to customers over the past five years. What's behind that phenomenon? Because that, that's quite an accomplishment. Yeah, the timing is, is uh, really perfect. This is an initiative that's been talked about uh, for a couple of years with the company. And as, we, as the residential service moves more to over the top type services, you know, not the traditional cable TV per se, it's, it's more the, the Hulu and, and, and uh, Yahoo and all those different types of services that you can get today, but really accelerated with this new work from home environment. And kids learning from home, you know, whether they're in K-12 or even college, which I have a daughter that came home to, to learn from home too. So the increase in bandwidth requirements is really, really critical. So yeah, to your statement, over the next five years, we plan to build to 1.6 million homes in various regions of our company. And, and this year alone, we're gonna do 300,000 homes. So that's a pretty aggressive, most aggressive in our company uh, company's history. 
in, in, in not only serving uh, residents, but really being able to provide higher bandwidth um, to businesses along, along the way as we build those fiber routes and into those residential neighborhoods is, is everybody is actually gonna win, whether you're a residential or a commercial customer, because the demand for bandwidth was always going up. It's just really, really accelerated with uh, the pandemic the last 12 months. And that really serves up that, um, you know, the, the reality that we're facing of the digital divide. You guys are really um, chopping away at it uh, in local communities and, and talking community, like we touched on earlier. Over the past few months, I know Consolidated announced a series of community giving programs like um, uh, your new educational grant program, $60,000 campaign pledge for United Way, one of my favorite charities, um, employee funded foundation support, interesting. Would you say this type of community support is just part of the consolidated culture? It really is. And, you know, probably what I'm most proud of, and, and even when, you know, I was part of a regional, um, you talked about Minnesota earlier, I was part of a regional company that was acquired by Consolidated Communications back in 2014. And corporate citizenship was really, really important to us. And it, it's, and, and very similar to Consolidated, critical needs, education really are two. And I actually sat on that board that gave away uh, all that money every year. And I know when we were acquired, that's the first thing I looked at Consolidated Communications was kind of their vision mission. And uh, they had the same corporate citizenship. So that's exciting. And I think the other thing is, and, and it's really attracted great employees. You know, we just do not have the turnover like most companies in our industry do because of that corporate citizenship. And that's why we still have offices and people scattered throughout the company or throughout the country. Uh, we don't necessarily bring everybody to get in one location because we want people involved in their communities. And to be honest, that's one of the benefits of me not traveling. I've been able to be involved in my primary service group this last year, which I had not been as involved as I used to be because of all my travel. and and that speech and hearing. But yeah, I mean, if you think about education, you know, and for those of you listening today that have had kids at home, spouse, partner at home, it was a challenge, right? Not only from a noise perspective, but everybody's trying to share that bandwidth. So if you were living in a home that did not have significant bandwidth, you felt the impact. And is my work or my kids' education more important? Well, it all is, but yeah, it, it, it's really, this expansion really, really um, correlates with our core corporate culture, which is K through 12 education and critical needs. So, and we have volunteer programs, um, just very, very proud that, that our company has that as an initiative. Phenomenal. So looking I, uh, at your career a little bit, as we do here on Data Movers, I see you've been with Consolidated for 18 years. You've been in telecom for 23 years. I think I might have you uh, edged out by a few years, even more than that. So we're really getting into like 56K modem territory here. But um, <laughs> so looking back on, on trends you've seen throughout your career, what, what surprised you, uh, intrigued you the most about our industry and how it's evolved? Yeah, really good question. I was uh, not to date, but I was at the tail end of the 56K modem. You're right. Um, <laughs> um, and internet and how it's, uh, how it's become such a normal part of our life. But I think for me, that is because, you know, that was the digital transformation where traditional telephone companies were all analog at that point, And they just gotten through the digital and then they went through the uh, becoming an internet provider with the 56 dial up modems and, um, you know, just the dependency on bandwidth, that was a really a slow development in our industry. You know, whether it's traditional telephone companies or traditional cable companies, it was very slow and evolving because, you know, the networks were built for voice, not necessarily for data. And as data became more and more prevalent and more and more required by whether it's a consumer or a business, that was big challenges because you had to upgrade the really the core of your networks to provide that bandwidth. So it's kind of that transition from voice to data. 
And I think the other thing that is probably, I, I wasn't necessarily a believer, and I remember this day probably maybe 13 years ago at a Cisco conference, when Cisco said video will be the new voice in one year. And I said, what? Video will be the new voice in one year. And man, did that happen. And it really took off with the millennials. And you know, it all started with this device. But now, look at the world we live in. So if you weren't an adopter of video, boy, the pandemic taught you to be an adopter of video and how critical it is. You know, if I ever get a voice uh, conference bridge, I'm going, what? I, I really don't know what to do anymore because I'm so used to video. I'm so used to seeing somebody um, across uh, across the screen here, where back to your question, that has probably been the biggest surprise is, is a lot of people had a hard time adopting the video. And if you remember, they had their cameras off even though they were on a video call, but it's just that adoption of video and how prevalent it is, not only in our personal life, but in our business life today. And then, you know, I think the other thing which we talked about at the beginning is IP, how, how important the internet how everything is going over the internet today with cloud services and being able to bring your phone from your office and plug it into your home and be just like at your office. So to me, to answer your question is really the video and, and the IP technology and, and how fast that became a critical part of people's lives. Absolutely. <laughs> and, you know, had we known to invest in Zoom you know, <laughs> in, exactly. Uh, February <laughs> last <Yes>. year. <laughs> uh, but that's a good lead into my next question. Knowing what you know now, if you could go back in time and give yourself one piece of advice, especially at the beginning of your career. You know, the thing I've learned how important listening is. Um, listening is a skill, and how important it is to listen and not speak. And and I really learned that. You know, I, I was very, um, even though I've been here a long time, it was my second job out of college. So I've been very blessed um, to be in this industry this long. But when I first moved into management, that's when I learned how critical is listening is. And, and one of my mantras is practice the 95-5 rule. Listen 95% of the time, speak 5% of the time because you learn so much by listening and taking that time to just listen, not speak, not interrupt, uh, gather your thoughts, take notes, but the power of listening, no matter what role you are and no matter what industry you're in, listening is the first skill I would recommend anybody mastering. And I think the second one is, um, you know, thinking about this is, is leadership really matters. You know, I, I've seen throughout my career, when you have strong leaders in place, nobody leaves. People want to work for people more so than money. And that doesn't matter if it's a Gen X or a millennial, whatever it is, strong leaders. And, and if you don't have turnover, your, your company is going to be much more successful because turnover is very costly. It's dangerous. It, it, it's unpredictable. So so for me, it's probably those top two, but I think we all can practice better listening skills. Solid advice. Um, so I'm a big fan of companies like yourself and consolidated companies that are competing against the telco giants out there that just seem to get bigger and bigger every day. But how do, how do you see the industry looking over the next one, two, three years in terms of the telecom landscape, competitive landscape? Yeah, that's really good insight. I like, we're large, but we're not one of the big guys. You know, we're, and, and when you're that way, we still can be swift and nimble, which we really proved um, to many, many customers in, in, in 2020. You know, for consolidated, uh, for companies that have weathered the storm over the last 10 years, which consolidated has, they've done a good job of making very good strategic decisions, uh, not stretching too far. But what you're going to hear now is, is growth, growth, growth. Uh, it, it's really a focus on growth. And it's really all three channels, whether it's consumer, we call it the three C's here, but consumer, commercial, and carrier. Um, I'm very thankful. Uh, I always have been, but I think 2020 gave a lot of us to be very, very thankful to be in this industry because we're so needed. 
And, um, and we're needed by all three of those C's that I talked about. So what you'll see about consolidated, just like the residential uh, expansion that we're gonna do is all about growth. So the companies that have really weathered the storm like us, you're gonna see them on a growth and accelerated growth plan going into the future because it's all about the bandwidth. You know, Evan, if you remember the 56K days, you know, the next was a T1, that was a big deal, right? And then 10 meg became the new T1, and then 100 meg became the new 10 meg, and then a gig became the new 100. Well, now it's 10 gig. Everything is, everybody's asking for 10 gig. And, and that's why we need to continue to grow um, as a company and, and whether it's organically or through the right acquisitions. So that's what you're really hearing a lot about. Talking about bandwidth and need for speed. Uh, exactly. Brings us right into our rapid fire, <laughs> like that transition. <laughs> our rapid fire section, one of my favorite sections. Um, I'd like to end our interview with a few rapid fire questions just to learn some fun facts about you. So tell us the first thing that comes to mind when I ask you, first question. If you could have lunch with a famous person in history, dead or alive, who would it be? That's a really good question. Um, well, I'm a big, uh, growing up in Iowa, I'm a brave, big Iowa Hawkeye fan. And uh, I actually still have, I have season tickets and that's me and my boys thing on the weekends, even though we didn't get to do it this last year. But Iowa's head coach is Kirk Ferentz and he is a legend in college football. He's been there 22 years, has a top 20 program pretty much year after year. And he does it with bringing in two and three stars. And for those of you that, that follow sports, you know what that means, but the five stars are what Alabama gets and Ohio State gets. And, um, but he takes two and three star uh, kids out of high school, turns them into great college players. And if you look at his record at the NFL has like the top three, top four number of, of kids that have went to the NFL from his program. So I'm just intrigued because obviously discipline and I run uh, primarily the sales organization here, which is all about discipline, but I would be very intrigued about how he stays disciplined, how he's changed over those 22 years to, to really keep, keep that program in such great shape and, and, and winning year after year. Talk about the importance of leadership and coaching. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Okay, so what is the most used app on your phone? I would have to say Twitter, um, and more from Hallelujah! Just... Finally, <laughs> <laughs> maybe the weather app next, but probably Twitter. And it's I'm not a big uh, tweeter, but I, I love following some key uh, news sources, and 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 it's immediate, and and I do like Twitter. So, no, oh, awesome. And what is your favorite hobby or pastime when you're able to break away? Well, I, as I mentioned, I, I love attending sporting events. I played sports. I coached sports for many, many years, as you can see from the pictures in the background. Um, I didn't get to do that this last year. I have to watch on TV or, or on the internet. But the other thing, you know, living in Minnesota, we have over 10,000 lakes and um, I love lake life. I always have. So, and to be honest, when I am on the lake and on the water, it's the only time I'm ever relaxed. So anytime I can spend time at the lake and on the water, uh, that, that's my favorite. We all need our little zen, you know? Yes. Especially 2020 beyond. <laughs> yes. I spent a lot of time there this last year. <laughs> all right. So favorite movie, podcast, TV show, book? Um, good question. Probably movie, The Blind Sign. Uh, that really struck with me and um, it was very, very powerful and it still is today. I don't think I've seen a movie that's moved me as much and, and maybe it more aligns with me um, being such a volunteer and I always teach my people to be difference makers and wow, um, was that mother a difference maker? So uh, I don't watch a lot of TV, but I do like The Blacklist with James Spade. He came from Boston Legal and it's, 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 I like the crime sci-fi type things and it's very, very intriguing, but for TV it would be the blacklist. Great list, great. Well, great. Well, thanks for joining us, Mike. Really nice connecting and meeting you and learning a bit about your mission at Consolidated. 
and um, look forward to uh, tweeting at you. So uh, there you let's go. Keep in touch that way. <laughs> and in talking about tweeting and and uh, joining our our data movers uh, following, if you will. Um, if you enjoyed today's podcast, come on in, check us out, jsa.net slash podcast for upcoming episodes. We release every other week on Wednesday mornings. Um, also, uh, our Twitter handles, uh, Evan? Jay Scotto and Evan Kerstell, and we will respond. So tweet at us. And in the meantime, happy networking. <laughs>